Hi, I'm Angeline Schellenberg, author of Tell Them It Was Mozart, published by Brick Books in 2016, and Fields of Light and Stone, published by University of Alberta Press in 2020. I want to read one poem from each. Tell Them It Was Mozart is about the ache and whimsy of raising two children on the autism spectrum. The diminutive professor takes summer vacation. I need a welding kit, he tells me, his training wheels wobbling. What do you think of the axial catwalk, he asks, and holds plans up to my face. Crews, quarters, and passenger decks neatly labeled squares on the back of his report card. And sheet metal, lots of canvas. Can't brush his teeth without a stool, but this kid's got environmentally friendly air travel in the bag. He assures me the prototype scale model will fit between the barbecue and sandbox. And bracing wires. He'll need bracing wires. On the way home, a stop for ice cream cones, library books on flight. The Hindenburg should have waited for helium, he says. They use the accessible hydrogen, but it's far more flammable. They shouldn't have been in such a hurry to take off. And from Fields of Light and Stone, a collection of elegies for my grandparents. Edges. One. She perches on the edge of a piano bench in a field of light. It's 1919 in a Ukraine before famine and Oma is singing. Her lips part so wide, the extravagant sky may fall in. Two, I perch on the edge of a stone flower bed in a field of dust. It's 1986 and Oma is pulling up red geraniums. Arthritis steadies her, gives her something painful to put her finger on. She moves, displaces air, her bones heavy with skimmed cream, her voice borrowed from crows, her arms, soft petals. Three, I perch on the edge of adulthood in Oma's hospital room. It's almost Easter, 1998, and Oma is inflated with cancer. Curled, she imagines peace shrinks to fit inside. Her eyelids fly wide after her last breath, first glimpse. Thank you to Turnstone for this opportunity and thanks for watching. Hello, my name is Joanne Ipp. I'm the author of Eigenheim, published by Turnstone Press and of Cattail Skyline, forthcoming from Turnstone. I'll begin by reading a poem from Eigenheim. This is from the first section of the book. These poems are all about a fictional character named Catherine, and they encapsulate many of the themes in the book, themes of home and memory and searching. This is called Passage. Catherine, walking at night, thinks of what lies outside the reach of street lamps, what light makes invisible, whose breath she almost hears at the mouth of an alley. If she turns her back, she might perceive a movement in her direction, a gaze fixed on her outline. She's tempted to defy all warnings, leave the lighted sidewalk for a dark passage. Once she walked alone among poplars on a moonless night, discerning the terrain with small steps, her eyes hard-pressed to judge depth or nearness, the night a solid thing that would still let her fall. 
She remembers fear, but longs to go back to that place where nothing happened, where she could mistake her luck for courage. Here, in the lane behind the cafe, she might be lucky, or she might not. This frightens her less than it should, less than slipping below the surface of her thought, sifting through its drifted leaves. And I'll read one from Cattail Skyline. This is from a series of poems that all came out of uh, travels I've taken by train. It's called On Our Own. Almost midnight, with faint stars and a quarter moon, I press my face to the coach window, cup hands around my eyes. Headlights wait at a crossing. A yard light outlines a house and barn. I sit back, let my reflection appear. My hair is just long enough to braid. I gather the top strands, divide in three, cross over and under. My window self also has hands poised behind her head. I can't see what her hands or mine are doing, but soon the French braid's done. Lumpy in places, but it'll hold. When my grandma rode the train for days and nights westward from the port, she had her mother and three sisters with her. They could inspect each other's hair, make sure the braids were tight and smooth all the way down. She was twenty then and wore her braids pinned up. Unpinned, they reached her waist. Window girl and I look at each other. This is the first time we've done it on our own. We turn our heads, check each other's handiwork as best we can. Thank you for watching.